My name is Danica. I'm an associate editor at Book Riot, and today I want to talk about some of the books that are out this week on October 5th. The first is The Book of Magic by Alice Hoffman. The Owens family has been cursed in matters of love for 300 years, but that's about to change. The novel begins in a library, the best place for a story to be conjured. That's when Jet Owens hears the Death Watch beetle and knows she only has seven days to live. Jet is not the only one in danger. The curse is already at work. A frantic attempt to save a young man's life spurs three generations of Owens women and one long lost brother to use their unusual gifts to break the curse as they travel from Paris to London to the English countryside, where their ancestor Maria Owens first practiced the unnamed art. The younger generation discovers secrets that have been hidden from them in matters of both magic and love by Sally, their protective mother. As Kylie Owens uncovers the truth of who she is and what her own dark powers are, her aunt Franny does discovers that she is ready to sacrifice everything for her family. And Sally Owens realizes that she will give up everything for love. So this is the concluding volume of the Practical Magic series that takes place after the events of Practical Magic. It brings back all your favorite characters from the first three books, and it brings readers from Massachusetts to Paris and London. Readers are saying that this is the best book in the series, and it provides a satisfying ending to a series with some passionate fans. Then there's Paybacks a witch by Lana Harper. Emmy Harlow is a witch, but not a very powerful one, in part because she hasn't been home to the magical town of Thistle Grove in years. Her self-imposed exile has a lot to do with a complicated family history and a desire to forge her own way in the world, and only the tiniest bit to do with Gareth Blackmore, heir to the most powerful family in town and casual breaker of hearts and destroyer of dreams. But when a spellcasting tournament approaches that her family acts as arbiters for, it turns out the pull of tradition, or the truly impressive parental guilt trip that goes along with it, is strong enough to bring Emmy back. She's determined to do her familial duty, spend some quality time with her best friend Lyndon Thorne, and then get back to her real life in Chicago. On her first night home, Emmy runs into Talia Avramov, an all-around badass adept in the darker magical arts, who is fresh off a bad breakup, with Gareth Blackmore. Talia had let herself be charmed, only to discover that Gareth was also seeing Lyndon unbeknownst to either of them. Now she and Lyndon want revenge. Only one question stands, is Emmy in? But most concerning of all, why can't she stop thinking about the terrifyingly competent, devastatingly gorgeous, wickedly charming Talia Avramov? This is a fantasy romance novel that is saturated with Halloween charm. Not only is it set in a town populated with witches, but the town also so doubles as a Halloween tourist trap. Add to that a revenge plot, a steamy FF romance, and a tournament of magic, and who can resist? This is like watching Halloween Town if Halloween Town was a bisexual romance novel. Next up is Squad by Maggie Takuda Hall and Lisa Sterl. When Becca transfers to a high school in an elite San Francisco suburb, she's worried she's not gonna fit in. To her surprise, she's immediately adopted by the most popular girls in school. At first glance, they're perfect. But at a party under a full moon, Becca learns these girls have a secret. Her new friends are werewolves. Their prey are slimy boys who take advantage of unsuspecting girls. Eager to be accepted, Becca allows her friends to turn her into a werewolf. And finally, for the first time in her life, she feels like she truly belongs. But then things get complicated. As the pack begins to buckle under the pressure, their moral high ground gets muddier and muddier, and Becca realizes she may have feelings for one of her new best friends. So this is a YA graphic novel that's being called Pretty Little Liars Meets Teen Wolf with a side of Jennifer's body. It's a darkly comedic, fast-paced thriller with a queer main character. It's also a revenge plot against misogynists. This already has a movie adaptation in the works after an eight-way bidding war for the adaptation before the book even came out, so I am very excited for this one. After that, I have Reprieve by James Hahn Matson. On April 27th, 1997, Four contestants make it to the final cell of Quigley House, a full contact haunted escape room in Lincoln, Nebraska, made famous for its monstrosities, booby traps, and ghoulishly costumed actors. If the group can endure these horrors without shouting out the safe word, reprieve, they'll win a substantial cash prize, a startling feat accomplished by only one other group in the house's long history. But before they can complete the challenge, a man breaks into the cell and kills one of the contestants. Those that 
that were present on that fateful night share their points of view. Kendra, a teenager who's been uprooted from her childhood home after the sudden loss of her father. Leonard, a desperate and impressionable hotel manager caught in a series of toxic entanglements. And JD, a gay international student who came to the US in a besotted search for his former English teacher. As each character's journey unfurls and overlaps, deceit and misunderstandings fueled by obsession and prejudice are revealed, forcing all to recognize the ways that their beliefs and actions contributed to a horrifying catastrophe. So this is a terrifying horror novel, just the words full contact haunted escape room give me the creeps, but it's also an examination of privilege, complicity, and racism in America. If you like your horror to keep you up at night with sheer adrenaline and with relevant social criticism, then this is the October read for you. Then there's Little Thieves by Margaret Owen. Vanya knows that no gift is freely given, not even a mother's love, and she's on the hook for one hell of a debt. Vanya, the adopted goddaughter of death and fortune, was Princess Giselle's faithful servant up until a year ago. That was when Vanya's otherworldly mothers demanded a terrible price for their care, and Vanya decided to steal her future back by stealing Giselle's life for her own. The real Giselle is left a penniless nobody, while Vanya uses an enchanted string of pearls to take her place. Now Vanya leads a lonely but lucrative double life as princess and jewel thief, charming nobility while emptying their coffers for her grand escape. Then, one heist away from freedom, Vanya crosses the wrong god and is cursed with an untimely end, turning into jewels stone by stone for her greed. Vanya has just two weeks to break the curse and make her getaway, and with a feral guardian half-god, Giselle's sinister fiancé, and an over-eager junior detective on Vanya's tail, she'll have to pull the biggest grift yet to save her own life. So this is the first book in a new YA fantasy series. It's a retelling of the Goose Girl that expands the story in unexpected ways and takes the point of view of the villain. It will appeal to fans of fantasy heist novels and prickly main characters. There's also an FF romance between side characters, and this is a queer norm world, so that means a world where homophobia doesn't exist. And lastly, there's The Fallen Girls by Haley Krischer. Shade and Jadis are everything to each other. They share clothes, a toothbrush, and even give each other matching stick and poke tattoos. So when Shade unexpectedly joins the cheerleading team, Jadis can hardly recognize who her best friend is becoming. Shade loves the idea of flying, being flung into the air by a group of girls. She loves the discipline it takes to push her body to the limits. Most of all, Shade finds herself drawn to the three Chloes, the insufferable trio that rules the squad, including the enigmatic cheer captain, whose dark side is as compelling as it is alarming. Jadis won't give Shade up so easily, though, and the pull between her old best friends and her new teammates takes a toll on Shade as she tries to forge her own path. So when one of the cheerleaders dies under mysterious circumstances, Shade is determined to get to the bottom of her death. Because she knows Jadis, and if her friend is responsible, doesn't that mean she is too? This is an examination of intense, all-consuming, codependent relationships between girls. Shade loves being so close to Jadis that they're the same person with different hair, as they say. But she also wants O to Jadis' shadow, if you will pardon the pun. The book begins with a prologue showing one of the cheerleaders dropping dead at a dance, then it backtracks to how they got there and then what the fallout is afterwards. There is a mystery element to this, but it's mostly about the relationships between these girls. And those are all the books that I have for you this week. Let me know in the comments if you're interested in any of these or if there's another book out this week that's on your TBR. If you've watched all the way to the end, please leave me a witchy emoji for the Book of Magic and Payback's a Witch. A few weeks ago, I said that Erica would be making her appearance on this channel and then there were so many problems with getting the camera working. I swear there was some kind of curse happening, but it should all be working now and you should be seeing Erica next week and then we will be alternating off. So until next time, happy reading!